Hey everybody, I'm Chris, a developer advocate at DigitalOcean, and we have a lot of questions and comments on our Laravel DigitalOcean YouTube videos, so I thought we'd go ahead and take a look at all of those and answer them real time on this video. Uh, so I would say that if you're building a Laravel app, you don't want to like find your storage folder in DigitalOcean's dashboard. You want to build out something in your Laravel app so that you can have like an upload button and a user can upload themselves uh, and then you can store that. And as far as storage goes, Laravel is cool because it lets you store in multiple places all based on your choosing, right? So you could technically build out a Laravel app where you store things in the file structure and Laravel can take care of that for you uh, and it give you the upload tools to do that. It can let you store your images and your stuff in a database. Uh, and all of that can be found in the Laravel's config slash database.php file, where you can just go in and uh, adjust that file and Laravel will say, okay, I'll go store things wherever you want me to. Yeah, I mean, the, the main answer to this is yes, we will be putting out much more content on the DigitalOcean YouTube channel. Um, definitely on Mern and the web stack. Um, me personally, I'm not so much on the mobile side, like the Flutter side, but happy to put out more web content. Laravel has a really robust roles and permissions tool set uh, and skills that you can add to your app so that you can say like, oh, I wanna create roles like an editor, admin, all that stuff, and then you can create permissions per role and say, okay, only an editor can update this, only an admin can delete this. So out of the box, Laravel lets us do a lot of those things. The issue here, uh, I don't wanna say issue, the, the main workload here is building the CMS itself uh, and then like, making sure your UI corresponds to those settings as far as roles and permissions. Um, I built a custom CMS for scotch.io and I will say that that was one of the most complicated, time-consuming things uh, I've ever done. Very big learning process though, so highly recommended if you are aware that you're gonna go down uh, a really big rabbit hole. Um, so as far as CMSs on Laravel that I recommend, that are already pre-built out of the box for you. Statomic is a really, really great option to uh, get up and running with the CMS with roles and permissions. Uh, and all you gotta do is hit install. They're, get, they're getting tougher. So the question is, is what uh, plugins am I using for my Visual Studio? VS Code. So let me open up VS Code right here and let me dig through. So as far as PHP ones, I am using, let me search for PHP. The ones that I have installed are PHP IntelliSense. There is the PHP IntelliSense, which has a lot more users, but in my experience, I found the IntelliSense plugin uh, to be a little bit better. CS Fixer is a formatter that can help you kind of find bugs in your code. So that's a really good one to have. PHP Doc Blocker is also a very good one to have. It'll kind of highlight your doc blocks and um, make them easier to read and create. Uh, PHP FMT, PHP Formatter is also a really good one for um, having auto formatting happen when you save files, which I'm a big fan of. I used to hate that, but really, really good feature nowadays. Uh, and those are my PHP ones. And let's see, the important ones for just overall development, I would say Better Comments is a really good one. I would say Bracket Pair Colorizer 2 is a good one. Uh, it kind of just highlights the, where a bracket starts and ends so that you can kind of match them up really quickly. Let's see, Git Project Manager, also very helpful. And Laravel Blade for Laravel Blade syntax highlighting is very, very useful in your Blade files. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit more about Laravel. Keep the questions and comments coming on the DigitalOcean YouTube channel and we'll keep answering them. Thanks.